Uh, yeah, I mean, what? Try huh? Whelan, Lee, Soonis, McDermott. Try them out. Yeah, that's a proper <laughs> midfield there. But you got, but you got your, your uh, kicked all over the place. Yeah. Right, uh, Christmas is coming, and if you need of an ideal stocking filler, then look no further than our new book, 20 Years of Talk Sport, behind the scenes of the UK's favourite sports radio stations, available now on talksport.com forward slash book. Uh, here's a little extra, uh, extract from chapter... Oh, no, 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 I can't do this. No. Uh, no, we're going to move on. We're going to... We'll move on. We'll move on, right? We'll move on. Because... Uh, good story, is it? Right, okay. Uh, right, uh, proving an actual fit alongside Brazil in the early days was Mike Parry, Mike Porky Parry. The partnership began to take shape towards the end of TalkSport's first year of broadcasting when Parry, who at the time was the station's programme director, he didn't know who I was, by the way. I walked into Oxford Street and he was like, uh, sorry, who are you, who are you? Oh, all right, 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 there you go, there's the studio, oh, where you go. I remember that well, snake. At that stage, I was the sole presenter, essentially giving opinions on the issues of the day, and then throwing to audio clips, Paddy felt a regular presence alongside the Scott would give the show a boost, and he knew the man for the job, yes, it was himself. Well, he's never been backwards or pushing himself forward, has he? Oh, Porky, a star of television now. <laughs> Is it Dave you're on? I can't remember. Porky, <laughs> good morning. Good morning, guys, and uh, great to be in the studio with you. And just a, a little couple of corrections to that. When they said in the early days, yeah. it was actually the first six years of the breakfast show, and we did it six days a week, okay? So, uh, there was a a, uh, a lot of broadcasting there. And you're absolutely right, Al. I searched high and low to try and find somebody up to the job of sitting alongside you and broadcasting with you. And when I couldn't find anybody, I did, in fact, nominate myself. And I think that... Well, the... I had a list of ten people that you supposedly asked, and yeah. I've spoken to Sydney, and they said you never asked them. No, I put myself at the top of the queue. <laughs> and when I accepted the job, I didn't bother getting down to the other nine, you know? What was, it, sure, what was it like to manage him? Um, well... That's not a question, really, that you can <laughs> that you can put to your co-presenter. You see, I had a very difficult role here. I was the boss, I was the brome director, and I wanted to discipline him every day for things that were going wrong. The problem was, as I was also his co-presenter of the breakfast show, he would then not talk to me for the next 24 hours, <laughs> including the following day's breakfast show. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Well, exactly so, three so, times. Well, well, yeah, yeah, unfortunately I had to. I was driven to it, you know, and, and these sort of things happened. However, because I am, you know, a good boss and, and, and a man who has kindness in his heart, every time I sat him, I brought him back. I mean, the figures did disappear off the edge of a cliff each time. That might have had something to do with it. But nevertheless, you know, it was one of those sort of scratch my back, I'll scratch your relationships, except that Al never scratched my back. No, I helped, I helped him out loads, Jamie. Well, oh, yeah? You know, when, when? When, when? When alcohol takes hold of Porky, <laughs> I have to pull people off him, right? <laughs> I was not only his sidekick, I was his minder. Why no, did, no. How did he get sacked? Well, I mean, it wasn't sacked, really. It, I think it was to give Al... <laughs> it should have been a written warning. No, to give Al his due, I think he just got a bit confused about the day. We were at Cheltenham, and uh, I remember being in the Guinness tent saying, right, Al, you know, we'll have the one and then we'll be away. And uh, I had the one, and then I was away, and I was going to follow me out the Guinness tent. But it, it didn't work out that way. You know, well, things tough. happen. Uh, people want to buy you drinks, people want pictures, so people want to change. Th 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 well, you know, no, I think things have changed over the years. But anyway, the following day, actually, we had started a new program called In the Boardroom. And it was to introduce chairman into Talk Sport. And the first guy to volunteer, as he always would, was Ken Bates. Old Silverbeard, who was, you know, fantastic. I mean, Ken would actually have run from Chelsea to here to get on the radio, as he always did, and he's great value for money. And Ken came in and started revealing, you know, the most intimate secrets about the workers of football. It was all over the papers the following day. Sadly, Al wasn't here, and Ken got offended, and then he cancelled his invitation, uh, our invitation to his party, didn't he? Uh, I, I, think, don't, I don't remember this. In, in Monaco. We were in Monaco. We got invited to oh, his house. Right. Got oh, you mean Monaco when you were standing on a table singing When I'm 64? Uh, oh, that was only because we were entertaining, uh, but I didn't know we were entertaining them until <laughs> I, the bill arrived on my plate. We were entertaining a load of um, senior footballing executives from the footballing world when Chelsea were playing Monaco. You didn't tell me that the wine cost a thousand um, well, I did, but francs you, a bottle. No, 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 no
he gave it the large one. And I did we, give it the large one. You did. <laughs> and we had some top guests there, and it came, they're, they're all millionaires, right? Yeah, and yeah. Bill came, yeah. He went, no, a, no, a table no, full no. of millionaires. I said, no, 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 this is on top sport. Porky's going to pay. He went, what? Yeah. I said, come on, come on, you're paying. He went, okay. So he got the bill, yeah. uh, but he'd, he'd, he was on a table singing Beatles. When I'm 64. That was, I'll tell you why that was. The place. I'll tell you why that was. That was because one of the three tenors was also at the table, okay? Yes. One of those antennas. And do you know what? This is so interesting. Somebody, one of the millionaires said, hey, you're a great singer. Give us a song. And you know what the tenor said? The tenor said, sorry, what do you do? And the millionaire said, well, I'm an insurance broker. He said, right, give us some free insurance, will you? And the insurance broker said, what are you talking about? He said, I don't sing for free, yeah. and you don't give insurance away yeah, for thought free. He, was, he thought so, it was Pavanaugh, you know, yeah, yeah, he yeah, could yeah, sing a bit. Again. Yeah, yeah. So to break the tension, because he was getting nasty, I said, don't worry, I will do it. So I did actually get on the table, and I did sing when I'm 64, got a, a, a round of applause. And, and everyone then, left. So he paid the bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, And he yeah, whinged yeah. like mad. So yeah. we were, at the time, our budget was low, right? Yeah. We made out. Well, of course this our budget terrible. was low. You they made me lie all. on radio. We had to make out we were staying in Monaco, but we were staying in this poxy hotel in Nice, right? <laughs> and every time a plane took off, he's gone, another damn place. You know, Mike, their, their helicopters were next to the helipad in Monaco, <laughs> aren't we, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. As he kicked the champagne out of the way on the balcony. Yeah. Anyway, he's got the hump with me, so we're on our way back to Nice. Mm. And I said, stop here, there's a great hotel here, and it's right on the, <laughs> the rocks, it's beautiful, and the, the, the waves were crashing, I said, come on, bottle of red. Mm. And they went, oh, that's quite reasonable, so I ordered two bottles of red, right? One for him, one for me. Yeah. And um, he gets he said, that's pretty reasonable. So anyway, it turns out later, three weeks later, he gets called into the, the MD's office, the financial director. Yeah. He says, I want to order you. It's a bit of scra a bit is extravagant, wasn't it? He mm. went, what? No, 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 we stayed in Nice, we didn't stay in Mon No, no, mm. the wine. He went, yeah, 90, and it was um, £90 a bottle. Mm. But old Dopey here was counting in francs, not I was. euros. It I was 900 euros 900 per bottle. euros per bottle. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. It's the most expensive wine I've ever drunk. But it was nice. It was very uh, nice. We're back yeah. with Porky in a moment, 9.14. Yeah. Yeah. The Alan Brazil Sports Breakfast in partnership with Arnold Park. Right, uh, tw coming up 19 after 9. Oh dear. Our new book about the station, 20 Years on Toxworth, is now available to buy. It's got five star reviews on Amazon, gives the inside story on all the mayhem and madness that surrounded the station since we launched 20 years ago. Wow. Lots of great stories from all your favourite presenters, including me. Funny enough, I feature heavily. I've even got my own chapter that I'm not even going to talk about. I'm too scared to read, well, to be well, honest. Well, no, you won't talk about those things, Al. I mean, I bought every book in, it in, in Suffolk, so yeah, the missus yeah. can't read it. Yeah, Jamie was asking what it was like before to work with you. I mean, to start off with, you wouldn't go to England matches. You know, we had a, a sponsorship. Hold on, can I finish my read-down? See, well, here well, again, well, you're butting in again. Yeah, but you see, you're trying to waste time. To get your copy now, by heading online at talksport.com forward slash book. The book features loads of great stories, and of course, who can forget this classic? I feel a bit of a fraud today. Why? Because I wasn't watching any TV last night. I was at the filming of the BAFTA tribute for Bob Monkhouse over at the BBC. Is that right? But that was a bit of fun. Oh, well, there were some really nice contributions from a lot of good people, including some of the best of the younger comics around now. You like Jack D, Jimmy Khan, Steve Coogan. Yeah. And, and the clips were absolutely sensational. They got all these greatest one-liners, his mm. acting roles, nostalgia by the bucket. I mean, you forget he was in things like Carry On Sergeant, mm. and as well as... Well, uh, many people, Gary, forget that he's one of the greatest stand-up comics you've ever seen. Oh, I, I saw him years ago when I was still a reporter in Chester, and at the time we only knew him as the host of the Golden Shot or whatever, you know? I tell you what, he's got a great, uh, you know, if he has to, he can do a blue version as well, which is meant to be fantastic. Oh, yes, yes, in fact, you can get those on, on oh, um, video still, on DVD probably now. Um, this, this, this show goes out the weekend after next on BBC One. You're absolutely, you, you're absolutely right. You're left with no doubt that Monkhouse was yeah. a giant. Yeah, sure. Oh, no, 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 absolutely. Kelly, what about Bob's health now? Uh, he died, um, at Christmas. Yeah, I think Mr. Brazil was, um, just, just looking a little bit back there rather than forward. Well, yeah, we, we right. that's, 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 yeah, see, yeah. I, I heard, uh, yeah. two different versions of yeah. it, to the be honest. The, the terrible thing Two was different versions, I was told. <laughs> 
Yeah, Al, how can you be told two different versions of somebody who's died? Oh, <laughs> hello, sort of hello, hello. I may have had a night yeah. out that night and yeah. I wasn't really listening. Well, I'll, I mean, I'll hold I mean, my hands up. I mean, let's get back poor to these. Poor old Bob, poor old Bob. Yeah, poor old Bob, these England games you missed. Honestly, Jamie, there we were travelling around Europe, you know, England, following England. They wouldn't go to England games. We went to, um, Doesn't go to any games. Went to Amsterdam, right? I don't and, like football. Uh, and, uh, it was, you know, it was a crucial game against the Dutch and all that. And, uh, <laughs> as we got to the ground, Al decided that there was violence in in the air, intimidation in the air, <laughs> so he pushed up to a casino somewhere, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and the next morning, <laughs> next morning. No, no, I mean, see, you've missed uh, a bit out, let me no, tell it. Go on. Right, yeah. so we had, he gave me a bit of a rollicking after the show, I went, oh, look, 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 stop it, stop it, come on, come on, so anyway, we, we had a few glasses of wine in this mm. Italian restaurant, anyway, we, we, go to the, we go to the game, and there was, the police horses were charging up and down, and England fans will remember, it was the new Stadium, yeah, well, Amsterdam Arena, and the the, the turnstiles went open, so the England fans are rioting because they couldn't get in. Yeah. They weren't fighting with the Dutch; they just couldn't get in. I went stuff this. I'm I'm Scottish. I'm off. Mm. Right. So we ended up in a bar that night, didn't we? And he said, Come on, we got to go. We got to go. And I went, I'm going nowhere. No chance. This is great, you know, playing cards and having a laugh. And anyway, he left. And I don't know where the time went. I really don't. But anyway, the next thing I knew, I'm in I'm in my room and. Yeah. Knock on the door. There's a little Irish guy. Said, yeah. Mr. Brazil, Mr. Brazil, Mr. Paddy yeah. sent me. Mm. Are you ready? Hurry up, hurry up. And I went, what? And I opened the door and I mm. just, I was just getting my, my jeans off, right? It was half past four, off. by the way. <laughs> he went, oh, 4.30 like, a.m. Okay, no problem. And mm. off he went. I thought, mm. what's he doing? Yeah. So he comes Sorry. back. So the, the Irish boy comes back, you know, and I said, uh, he said, yeah, he said, uh, he, he's in fine shape, Mr. Parry. He's in fine shape, Mr. Parry. I caught him just going into the shower. <laughs> so about one minute to six, there's still no sign of Al. So I said, go and get him again and find out what's going on. No, I suppose, like, oh, I'm sorry, he wasn't just getting in a shower, he just got into his room and he just got into bed. <laughs> so, so we have a massive row after that show as well. We no, go no, back, no. we go no, back. He pulls, to no, he pulls me in. He yeah. says, come on, come on, you'll be all right in 20 minutes. Ooh, ooh. So he's raging, he's got the headphones on and he's trying to fill on his own, Jamie, and I'm sitting there. <laughs> and there was a big bowl of M&Ms, right? Yeah. And I'm going, one for me, poof. Flinging it and pinging it at Porky, <laughs> one for they, Porky. They were bouncing well, off he's my on face. air. He's like, Grrr, and he couldn't do it because he's on air. <laughs> so he says, right, that's it. Downstairs, ten o'clock. I'm going to sort you out. Mm. Remember that? I do. We went to we went back to the restaurant across the road. We'd been in the previous day. Oh no, no, no! It was John Sadler's <laughs> leaving. Do see your memories? No, John up. Sadler's leaving. Do was in the hotel when we got yes. back. Seriously, so no, we went, no, we, no, we went down there. Yeah, and you kept trying to fire me, and your friend from the FA turned. Oh, mm. oh hello, how are you? You yeah. know, you get all that, Miss Joe. You yeah, you're going right. to you're going to sack me. In the end, I said, look, 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 this is no good. Let's go over to the restaurant and mm. and get it out of the way. It's Do what you want. Yeah. And as we walked into the restaurant, the yeah. waiters applauded. Yeah, them. So a round of applause. And then as we sat down, and before we'd even ordered a drink, the manager of the restaurant sent one of his boys to the off license <laughs> down the road to get another case of Pinot Grigio because there wasn't any left. We'd done seven <laughs> the day before. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, those were the days when you know when, when discipline was not the order of the day. Well, discipline no, you, is no, now the order of the day. Bottles and 40 fags no, in those no, days. No, 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 hat's gone. Utter nonsense, Al, utter nonsense and rubbish. But, um, no, for most of the time, of course, I mean, they were rare exceptional, um, bouts of unusual behaviour. Most of the time, it was a hard grind. Hours and hours a day of research before, before getting in, before getting into the studio. You know, and, and, well, I was doing all the research. You were, uh, you were there just, you know, delivering, you know, I was throwing the balls up, Al, and you were just whacking them. It was as simple as that. But it went very well for a number of years. Um, I want to tell you guys about, uh, that and picture. And then you were bad living caught up, were you? Well, it didn't actually catch up with it me. Did you ended up in hospital? I ended up on the heart transplant list, which everybody knows, and... He blames me, Jamie. Well, I, <laughs> look, 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 I'm absolutely serious. I worked with Al from 98 to 2004 on the breakfast show, as I say, six days a week, uh, four hours a morning. I was getting up at half past three every morning, and then after, you know, uh, doing it at Miss Brill till ten, I was, I had my other duties to cope with. And in 2004, at, uh, in Portugal, uh, my heart just exploded. And... Al was it was in uh, Portugal. You're uh, losing your memory. It was, it was in Lisbon. It was in Lisbon. It was outside the Bernabeu when you couldn't walk up the hill with that numpty brain tunnel. That, we were on our way to Portugal. Yeah, we but we it were was in Madrid. Madrid. Yeah, I know, but I still refused to come home, even, even though I was dying. I mean, I was literally on my hands and knees. I refused to come home. 
and Wayne Rooney saved my life because I said to the office every day, they said, you, you've got to come home, you know, you're seriously ill. Now, I was seriously ill. Uh, only one, uh, only about 13% of my heart was working. I said, I'm not coming home till England so go out. So Wayne's metatarsal saved your heart? Wayne's me Lord Wayne up. Rooney's metatarsal saved my life because if he hadn't broke his metatarsal in the quarterfinal, right, I would have stayed till the final and the doctors told me when I eventually got home, I would have died. So thank you, Wayne, for getting the broken metatarsal. I came home that day. And you walk in here with Silvio, a placard. That is a disgrace. I'm not, walking, I'm not walking anywhere with a placard saying Silver out. What I've said Well, no wonder you've been banned from the director's box. <laughs> <in Goodison. laughs> I haven't been banned from the director's no, box. No, do you not remember telling me something yesterday? Uh, 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 no, I do not remember telling you anything. If I tell you things in confidence, Al, they're supposed to stay in confidence, you know. Not be broadcast to millions of people the following morning. Look, I said from the start, I wasn't sure. Jamie, Good morning, I, Mr. Kenwright. I, I, I would, I would, Mr. Kenwright is the greatest ever Evertonian. Mr. Kenwright has kept Everton you? on the street. Why has he banned you? He hasn't banned me. I, ha I, I don't know where you're Why you does he not take your calls? Uh, it's not a question of not taking my calls at all. In fact, I spoke to Mr. Kenwright quite recently oh, yeah, oh, yeah. about his And he new... said, don't call me again. <laughs> uh, that's a bit harsh, Al. Uh, about his new venture with Paul McCartney, you know, the putting oh, a music hall together. You've got to do that yeah. story before we break. Well, Peter uh, Sissons. Uh, okay, I will. Peter Sissons is, is a great broadcast journalist, age 76, died this week, and terribly sad, and he worked across all the, um, broadcasting networks. There's a most incredible picture, right, it's been published from his youth. He went to a junior school in Liverpool, and they were on the day out in the Isle of Man. They're all eight, eight years of age. Peter Sissons is on the left here, Jane, if I show you that. Yeah. The little boy in the middle, aged eight, is John Lennon. Wow. In the same class as him. And the little boy on the right is Jimmy Tarbuck, okay, who is also in the same class as him. I thought that was, um, coincident enough. I've discovered overnight the tall boy behind Jimmy Tarbuck is Brian LeBone, the captain of Everton uh, in 66 when we won the wow. cup and 70 when we won the league championship. Peter Sissons... <laughs> he then, then moved to a posh school. Then goes to the Liverpool Institute, which was a grammar school in Liverpool, sits down on day one in his class, and the boy on his left... Was from the Bullock Tire. Who was he? <laughs> Paul McCartney, who then had not even met John Lennon. I mean, it's the most remarkable historical picture I think I've ever seen. And, and it just shows you, you know, Liverpool is most famous, really, for football and the Beatles, and that combines the two. Absolutely amazing. I tell you what, Jamie, he's got some imagination, isn't he? He is <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> don't forget, all day don't listen, forget, yeah. you can buy 20 years... Oh, no, by the way, he ain't going anywhere. He's with <laughs> us later. Don't forget, you can buy In 20 years of Top Sport by heading to topsport.com forward slash book. Our thanks to Porky Party. Hello, Brazil. Talk sport. <laughs> He's a screwball, isn't he? He is an absolute screwball, Paddy. Yeah, I love that, mate. I'll sit there all day and listen to him. Well, you're going to have a bit in the pub with him in a minute. He's mobbed on, honestly. <laughs> uh, good morning, the Alan Brazil Sports Breakfast.